Hi there, it's Faye. If you caught my stream the other day, then you might already know that I was accepted into the Influencer Alpha for Sunnyside. Sunnyside is a JRPG farming simulation game coming out late next year, but we're getting an early look thanks to the team over at Rainy Games. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of the building mechanic in Sunnyside. This game is inspired by classics like Harvest Moon and also the Persona series which you can see in some of the art like this. But when it comes to farming and building up your home, Sunnyside doesn't just adopt from other games. The team is really focused on making it more realistic with hoses instead of watering cans and not stuck in the past. So we're going to use this really cool drone to actually place blueprints from a bird's eye view. So let's get started. When you first start Sunnyside, Gabe introduces you to your farm. He tells you about the tent that he pitched personally and you're like, where is my house? And apparently there isn't one. He asks you if someone named Hero has texted you yet because he can help you get squared away, whatever that means. Eventually, we make our way over to Hero and he fixes our phone and, upon being prompted, offers us a prototype survey drone, also called the Aerial Building Assistant. Back at our farm, our phone literally has this drone app and look at me fly. Your drone will fly in the direction that you're looking at, so keep that in mind, and you can press shift to go a little bit faster. The standard setting is the flying one where, you know, the drone just flies around. But pressing 2 brings you to this build mode. Look at all these cool items we can place. Well, we can't just place them for free, but we can place the blueprints of them for free. And surprisingly, the blueprints are visible even when you're just running around. Now, I promise we'll get to farming in another video, but for now, I really wanted a hecking house. So we're gonna place a blueprint for this small house. With its convenient four walls, I can't wait to be cozier than my tent. There are walls that you can place, both full walls and half walls, and even ceiling pieces. So I'm wondering if we can make our own custom house, but we'll try that another time. For now, I'm placing a house blueprint and a little crafting table blueprint too. Feel like I'll need that soon. I'm also placing a grill because, spoiler alert, Gabe invites you to dinner your first night in Sunnyside and tells you about how you can cook with a grill. He is actually American, even though Sunnyside is set in Japan, and tells you that the grill is very hard to come by here, so you're gonna have to build it yourself. Back to the blueprints. I've also placed a blueprint for a long wall. Your farm in Sunnyside has two main areas, the bottom area and the top area. They're both equally large. And in my brain, I figured I would farm on the bottom area and build on the top. At this point, I figured collecting as many materials at once would be best so I actually go back into the drone and build some blueprints for a chicken coop in case all the materials I need for that are around everything else. I love farming simulators and Sunnyside has a very robust farming system that we'll get to in the future but one of the other things I love about farming sims is being able to just create your own life in this you know usually abandoned area. <laughs> so building and customizing my own house and then setting up for some real chicken babies is something I love. We built the chicken coop blueprint and taking a look at the other items we have, we actually have to build a chicken bed and a chicken feeder. So I went ahead and tried to place those blueprints inside the chicken coop, but they wouldn't go down. And I think it's because the chicken coop blueprint was kind of on the grass. So I move it down a little bit more onto the dirt. And now I can place my little chicken bed. As you can see, I struggled a little bit with moving the chicken coop blueprints and then the chicken bed blueprints. I kind of wish there was like a way to link them so I can move them all at once in case I need to move things later. But this is a closed influencer alpha access. Like I, I am not complaining in the least. I placed the chicken feeder and realized I actually haven't placed anything inside the home blueprint. So I grab this cozy looking bed, much better than the mat we have in our tent, and fly back over. I'm kind of surprised to find that I could place the bed blueprint inside the house even though the house is on the grass. I kind of thought that was a problem with the chicken coop but maybe some of the grass is okay and some isn't. But anyway, with that, all of our first blueprints are finished. We can literally walk around and pretend like those items are actually there. Upon checking the blueprints again and seeing which materials I need, I go ahead and click Control E to pin the requirements to my phone. And it looks like I need a laptop to make my crafting table, which uh, I'm, I'm assuming I'm gonna have to buy that. And this is going to help us a lot as we're collecting materials out in the wild. All right, I already warned you about the spoiler, but on your first day in Sunnyside, Gabe will invite you to have dinner with him. And during that time, he also mentions that you're free to use his workshop bench in his shed. Since I already knew about this, and since we need a laptop to make ours, we're going to run over to Gabe's ranch and steal his laptop. I mean, build some stuff. Unfortunately, it does look like we don't have enough materials to make anything but I do recognize this sand bucket that I need to make glass. The bucket's actually in my little tool menu and I wasn't quite sure what to use it for so let's take a trip to the beach. 
I wanna take this moment to thank my mom, my cat. Oh, wait, wait, no. I mean, I wanna take this moment to appreciate the setting that Sunnyside is in and just how gorgeous this game looks. I streamed this game last Saturday. And while some people are being critical on how the game looks, particularly, I guess, the characters, I don't really get it because this is a very restricted alpha access and the settings look beautiful. I don't know about you, but there's no way I could paint landscape like this, much less make it a 3D space where I could actually have a game in. So I encourage you to enjoy the views and note that for alpha access, the Rainy Games team is not focused on polish, but rather gameplay. We make it to the beach and very quickly, I discover that there seems to be no cap on the amount of sand I can just collect. I collect a bit of it, and then I collect a bit more, and then a heck ton more. Mostly because I'm also getting plastic and metal scraps as I collect the sand, and I'm just not quite sure if I'm going to need a lot of that or not. So enjoy the spamming. I spend the rest of the day at the beach collecting a bunch of sand before having that dinner with Gabe that I've already shown you twice. Eventually, it's finally time to sleep and end our first day in Sunnyside. The next morning, I actually start farming, but again, you're just gonna have to wait for another video there, sorry. The crops look so cute though. Instead of farming, it's time to collect some softwood, hardwood, and make it into plywood. I think I said that right. Anyway, we're cutting trees down. Okay, that's the bottom line. And look at these tree physics. You cut the tree literally in half, and then it falls and kind of like actually interacts with what's around it. <laughs> At this point, I figure out that my pinned material list for my blueprints is actually in my to-do list on my phone. This is a really easy way to check on what I have, but please note it's literally keeping track of what I have in my pockets and not what is in the structure in the blueprint already. That did confuse me for a little bit. Anyway, we're back to Gabe's crafting table because he has a laptop and I still don't. And look, I was right. We could make some plywood with our softwood and hardwood. We could also make glass with our million sand buckets, but it looks like we can't make a hundred at once. While I was watching some of the other amazing alpha influencers who are playing this game, by the way, check the description for links to them, the Rainy Games team did share that there is a limit on the number of things you can make at once on the crafting table, and that's particularly to kind of slow you down. This isn't a crafting game, it is a farming game with crafting mechanics. And I did hear a little bit of a hint that perhaps in late game, the crafting table is not how you're going to be making all of these things. Anyway, we make some glass. And you guessed it, it's back to chopping down those trees. These aren't even the trees on my farm anymore. I'm just stealing Gabe's trees. How would you feel if this 20 something year old came to your town to be a farmer and doesn't know how to farm and then uses your crafting table and then cuts down all your trees? To be fair, I literally don't have a house. Like, help, Liz. <laughs> I guess this is when I should tell you about the stamina system in Sunnyside. As you can see in the upper right, I have a stamina bar and then I also have a hunger bar beneath it. Again, this is alpha gameplay so it might change, but the way the stamina bar works right now is that it goes down when you do work, but it also goes down extremely fast if you are hungry slash starving. So as I'm chopping down trees, I actually just am literally not running out of energy as long as I keep eating my apples and my bread and these random berries I found. But I did have some days when I first started playing where I ignored the hunger bar because nothing truly bad happens if you ignore it. You don't pass out, or at least that's not a mechanic yet in the game, but your stamina will hit zero. And from what I've tried, you can't increase that above zero again until the next day, even if you do eat a lot of food. So yep, that's how I am just infinitely cutting down trees. But I'm sick of cutting down trees for now, so let's go ahead and check in on Hero because I know he sells things, and I'm wondering if he's selling something I need, such as that glossy, gorgeous laptop. It turns out he is, but it looks a little expensive, so I suppose we might actually have to farm. I do notice that Hero is also selling some metal products, like screws and metal sheets. Even though Gabe told me that I should talk to this wonderful old man, Kazuki, who is the neighborhood blacksmith. Kazuki tells me his life story, and honestly, it's a very cozy, kind vibe. This man's really wanted his son or his daughter to inherit his metal making business, but they had other dreams in mind and so he's still here for now. He tells me to bring him some metal ore and that he can smelt it for me, but from reading a little bit more from the Sunnyside devs, Kazuki's shop is not in the game quite yet and everything that you can buy from him you can actually buy currently at Heroes. So we'll come back one day when we have money and in the meantime it's time to collect some stone.
Once I get tired of hitting rocks, I decide it's time to check out the general store in town. If Hiro's selling cool stuff, maybe this person is too. We meet Sako, who owns Oak Tree Groceries, and I immediately see that she's selling bolts of fabric, which I think we're going to need for our bed. I kind of have that expensive laptop at Hiro's in mind, and so I remember when we were collecting a lot of sand, we actually got a lot of recyclable plastic and stuff too. Sako seems like she's down to buy things from us, so I open the menu and think about how much recycled plastic I'm willing to give away. And I'm telling you this, this is the moment right here. This is the moment I realized that I could sell Sako buckets of sand for $1 each. 300 and something buckets of sand for $1 each. <laughs> we might just get out of this game with no farming at all. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I kinda wanna talk about it another time, but the laptop is within our reach. And so are these stone fences, now that I have hit a million rocks a million times. I build a few of them and lo and behold, you can indeed move a finished fence with the drone once it's built. I still can't figure out if I can move the blueprints or remove those, but I am very happy to spend all of my stones basically on this fence now that I know I can move it around. Unfortunately, this does leave us with basically no stones left over for our actual building, but that's tomorrow me's problem. Before going to bed, I decide to use Gabe's crafting table one more time and to finally make some plywood now that we've spent all day cutting down trees. It seems like hardwood is harder to come by because we are playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. Just kidding, but I, I really need to go back to my island. I'm sure they're missing me. And with that, it's finally bedtime in our small tent. Hopefully our last time doing so. I know it's only day three and we're about to finish our house, but please note that this is actually the second time I've tried a new game in alpha. So if you're going to play this game sooner in the future, please remember, you know, these games are supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be serene and they're supposed to be just really happy and a good time. So don't feel like you have to rush to do anything. It's just, you know, what I was doing on this playthrough. We wake up and I double check everything we need for this house and actually figure out how to pin the list to my screen. This is going to help us know exactly when we have just enough things to build. After chopping a bunch of trees for wood that we need, I still need some iron rods and iron sheets from Hero. So back to the beach and the plethora of sand it is. You have to admit these little clicks are kind of satisfying. After the beach, I'm mentally prepared to go back to chopping down trees. This is when I realized that these skinny trees actually give a lot of hardwood, maybe three or four or even five each, even though it only takes a few chops to get them down. So yep, I targeted them. Back at Sako's, I sell 600 or so sand buckets because why farm when you can just sell sand? Back at Heroes, I check our list, and then I buy a bunch of bolts, iron rods, and iron sheets. I had already bought a laptop at this time. We only have a few things left, some hardwood, stone, and glass. I'll save you from watching me cut down more trees and stuff, but here's me making some more glass, and it's actually started raining by this point. Not gonna lie, I've always loved rain and thunderstorm days. It reminds me of like not having to go to school when I was younger, so enjoy a little bit of this ambiance. Again, this game looks beautiful. It's set to release late 2022 and it already looks this good. Like, ah. Uh. We're back home and I know I wanted to sleep in a real bed tonight, but the game is in alpha and I was a little scared of messing up the build somehow. So I went to sleep first to save our progress before we finally build our house. It's morning time. So here's one last look at our blueprints before we build them. This is again using our building drone, which is a very unique aspect to the game. It really makes building easier, particularly when you're in a 3D non-pixelated space and you can't see too much of the map. And with that, we're ready to build. Scrolling over the materials with our mouse lets us place it onto the house and doing so makes that material show up in the build. And ta-da, the house is finally done. The door opens and it looks like a soggy wet mess, <laughs> but it's a house with four walls and a roof. So I'm happy. I was actually low on plywood to finish the bed, so I built our workshop bench first, pulled some plywood together, and finally we have a real place to sleep. Now, this is when I noticed something weird. I wanted to use the drone to place some lights to build inside my house, right? But look, I like can't get in the house <laughs> now that it's built. The drone just like can't fly in. The water texture from the rain is pretty heckin' cool though. 
What I ended up doing to fix this problem is actually opening the door with my person and then quickly switching to the drone and flying on it. Um, this doesn't seem to be the best solution, although it was a funny one. Also, look at the grass in my floor. Oh my god, it's totally my fault for putting it here. Upon doing this again, I did have some problems trying to get the drone through the door. I, I don't know, like the door would close too fast or my drone wasn't placed correctly. So if you're trying to do this, make sure your drone is like closer to your door than mine was or place all your lights and stuff beforehand. All in all, it wasn't too much of a trouble, but it was definitely confusing at first. With this tool, I actually placed blueprints for lights, as well as a kitchen table and a little kitchen cutting board. I haven't built those yet, but I love to see how the house is coming together. As a bonus, here's me finishing up the poultry feeder. I haven't actually made the chicken coop yet, but soon I'll be raising all them babies. And yeah, that is the conclusion of this video. I hope that you enjoyed taking a look at the building mechanic currently in Sunnyside. Obviously things are going to change once we are out of alpha and even during alpha as the months continue. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more gaming content from me. And please leave a comment below. What do you think of Sunnyside so far? Do you like the aesthetic? Do you like the building mechanic? Do you like the drone? Are you laughing over me hitting a door with the drone? Let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.